So I'm going to take you through our full capability of Mark Monitor's brand protection solutions. So whether or not it's uh, of interest to you for fraud, domain management, or brand protection, it's important to know that we have broad capabilities to make us the best partner for your company in the long haul. So here's just one of our agendas. It's going to go through the online banking landscape, then the social engineering attacks generally, some online abuse trends, and then some best practices. So with the online banking landscape, Channel innovation remains the key focus of financial institutions and other industries worldwide, with a desire to provide a positive user experience across online, mobile, and branch channels being of the greatest importance. The mobile channel is getting the most attention from banks when it comes to innovation, and this is becoming increasingly important for other areas as well. So mobile banking is therefore getting huge attention from fraudsters as well, who are capitalizing on users' naivety or on a bank's lack of security. Fraud is now a compromise of traditional phishing, but also social engineering making scams seem more personal and therefore more real. Traditionally, this was a banking sector problem, but it's becoming more and more evident in the world of retail, not just of finance, but also anywhere where there's an online presence. Social engineering is becoming increasingly important where we all use our different social media, Facebook pages, for example, and therefore we're a target for these kind of attacks. For example, in the emerging markets, Africa is experiencing an explosion of mobile money services as banks and mobile service providers compete for customers who otherwise might not have had a bank account. This has increased phishing attacks on unsuspecting customers in an effort to lure them to fake sites. Statistics show that 20% of accounts are compromised within just 30 minutes of having personal data harvested by scammers. So what is social engineering? Social engineering deliberately tricks people into believing that something is personal to them and therefore tricks them into revealing personal confidential data, which can then be used for some sort of fraud. One scammer who was interviewed by a security firm about his social engineering habits revealed that he was very clever in his targets. He checked out the person's Facebook profile, their LinkedIn profile, both of which detail innocent information about the interests of the person for example, if the person was very fond of animals, he would set up an animal cruelty-related scam in order to target what they were interested in. This kind of social engineering scam combined with fraud is really on the rise, and it's now a top security concern this year. Fraudsters now use social media, mobile applications, email, and websites to do their fraudulent activity in a multi-pronged approach, so customers need to be aware and protect themselves in all of these areas. This page here shows the evolution of the fraud threat cycle and the methods by which it's used. Fraudsters are evolving beyond the standard email channel, which involves just sending out emails asking for information, usually where we look for phishing attacks. So we need to look beyond that channel. You can see here in the channel list that actually the ways they're able to do this now include our social media profiles, its mobile phone apps. Increasingly, people download an app on their phone or on their iPad or Android platform. They're not just going to a website anymore, and therefore all of these areas are a target for these fraudsters. The fraudsters then launch the social engineering attack. There's lots of different tactics, so this false association, perhaps being uh, pretending to be a partner, the impersonation of an account or of a, a company. And then, of course, the scammers want to earn money from this, and so there is a monetization aspect. So they will be selling your credentials. Perhaps you put in um, a credit card number to donate something to a charity page. So there's all sorts of different things that they can do in order to monetize the attack that they're doing. So fraudulent attacks at a domain level. For domain names, both the security of your own domain names and the monitoring of other domain names, which could be called fraud of some sort, is absolutely vital in today's fraud world. Fraudsters will often register a new domain name in order to launch a phishing page or to gather information. Registering a website with a company name in the domain name without permission is called cyber squatting, and this impersonates the brand in question because the website may have a similar name or the same look and feel. Customers can be duped into thinking the page is actually legitimate. This is dangerous not only from a fraud perspective, but also from a brand reputation perspective. And cyber squat sites should be monitored and where possible action taken to close the site, therefore removing both the impersonation and any potential fraud associated with it. 
Your own domain name portfolio is also vital when considering the risks of fraud. Have you registered enough core domain names? Are they registered in the relevant countries? Could a scammer have them? Are you watching what is being registered in your name? At Mark Monitor, we have preemptive security measures to provide peace of mind. Two-factor authentication for everyone logging into our domain portal, registry and portal locking, IP access restrictions to prevent anyone outside the company from accessing your portfolio, false password changes, and automated email notifications of any changes to the domain. The so-called new GTLDs, for example, .bank or .london, are also seen as a huge source of fraud, and this is also a massive problem for impersonation. The .support new GTLD, for example, could be seen as the domain name for technical or customer service support at your company if a scammer purchases the domain name before you and creates an authentic-looking website. There are specific regulations around registering a .bank domain name. If you haven't done this already, do consider this and I'll give you more information. But all of the new GTLDs really should be looked at and assessed for their threats against your own company. So fraudulent attacks via websites. This is a traditional way of fraudsters doing business. They register or hack a domain name and create a page which has the same look and feel as your real website, usually with some minor changes, for example, requesting your PIN number. We are increasingly seeing impersonating social engineering websites, not just asking for personal information, therefore it doesn't count as a fish, but instead it redirects traffic to a similar site with a slightly different financial rate or a slightly different piece of information on a similar topic. Loan and insurance scams are becoming more common as well. Signing up for simple emails with a loan provider could place your email address on a list of emails frequented by scammers and therefore putting you personally at an increased risk of attack. Social engineering is then a problem because if they already have an active email address from you, they're able to do more personal emails in order to make you fall for those if they are checking out other aspects of social media. For example, as we mentioned before, your LinkedIn profile or your Facebook profile. So this is a graph to show countries that are targeted by malicious emails. So there are uh, huge numbers, uh, for example, here in the UK, the USA, but also in Brazil. So there's a, a wide variety of countries that are targeted by this, not just uh, English speaking countries, but also other languages as well. There are also many types of fraud which can occur on paid search. This is the sponsored advertising section on search engines. Phishing links or traffic diversion pages can be posted into the sponsored advert to trick customers into clicking on it. Again, loan and insurance companies are often a target here. Different loan rates are offered. Competitors can bid on each other's company name keywords as long as they fall within a fair use policy. But it's up to you as the brand owner to police this. So it's really something that brand owners have to pay attention to. Then fraudulent attacks via social media. So this is now one of the most common areas for new fraudulent attacks to emerge. Nowadays, so many people use social media both in their private and professional lives. Unwillingly, you can give away a lot of personal information which can be seen by scammers. For example, your likes on Facebook could show who you bank with or where you do your shopping. Your love of dogs is seen in many pictures of your own dog and the likes for various dog charities could give away your password for both your email or bank accounts. There's been an increase in phishing attacks via social media, especially in posts and sponsored or promoted posts on the likes of Twitter and Facebook. There's an example here on the screen where you can see the picture of a lot of US dollars. This was actually a post that kept being reshared and reshared, and it goes viral very, very quickly. We also see a lot of loan generator emails, comparisons of bank account rates or mortgage rates, which might be false and can take the visitor away from the main site and into the hands of a scammer. These types of social media fraud should be monitored for the damage it can do to your customer base, but also to your company reputation for being associated with such scams. There are also fraudulent attacks via mobile apps. Mobile apps, as I mentioned earlier, is a hugely growing area for both legitimate business and fraudsters when trying to scam victims in a social engineering atmosphere. Some samples include phishing apps, apps that aggregate information and redirect users to specific sites around the internet. It stores uh, passwords, banking logins. They're normally harmless, but some will redirect to a phishing site after a couple of weeks. 
So companies need to be aware of who's using their name and in what context. And in Harmless App, comparing banking information from different companies one minute, it could be a fish the next. There are also piracy apps, which are apps linking or providing access to pirated content, for example, uh, books or music. There are malicious apps, and this is a huge growing area. Apps carrying viruses are designed to be malicious from the very beginning. They'll normally have malware. Overall, mobile malware is designed to steal or extort money from users. For example, um, SMS Trojans, Banker Trojans, and Ransomware Trojans. The Ransomware Trojan has been in the news a lot recently, where it's been the targeting um, health institutions like hospitals taking over their um, internal system, and they would have to pay in order to get all of that data back to provide the healthcare that has been needed. This actually accounts for 23% of new mobile threats in 2015. All three mobile malware types are extremely dangerous, and the malware writer's interest in their victim's money provides an incentive for further development of this type of scam. So this is one to watch. Other types of impersonation fraud include copycat and cloned apps, partner apps, so this is where affiliated apps are used but misusing a branded term, they're claiming affiliation where perhaps there is none, or it's against the terms specified by your brand. Unauthorized authentic apps, perhaps authentic apps are found in the wrong app store, or they're charging for a free app, which is damaging business goals set by your brand, or association with an undesirable app store. And also outdated apps is a problem. Perhaps this isn't exactly fraud, but it's where your brand's reputation comes into play. For an example, an expired app where a new version is available or an app associated with a promotion that's no longer current. This really harms the user experience and your brand image. This slide really highlights why online fraud and impersonation is an issue in various ways. It's your business data, so your customer data is at risk. It can financially harm your business. There's a serious financial impact to any kind of fraud, and even if it's a social impersonation type of fraud, the user will feel that the bank is responsible for helping them, or that you as the retailer are responsible for looking after their data and making sure that when they search your brand, it's only your brand that is found. So even impersonation will have an impact on your actual business. So what's the solution? There isn't really one solution, but a combination of solutions for different purposes. So that's why you need a provider who can offer services in a wide range of areas and not only focus on one. Both fraud and social engineering are developing all the time, and most of the time the point of social engineering is to commit some sort of financial fraud, even if it's outside of a traditional financial customer. So you really need to consider prevention, detection, and a mitigation strategy for each of the different channels so that you are protecting your customers. Think about your social media stance. Think about what websites you're looking at and what you are defensively registering for your own domain names. And have an appropriate enforcement strategy in place. Do those brand enforcements. Do the fraud shutdowns. And also, if there is a fish involved, make sure you're fraud casting. That's basically where we put a holding page on the site so that none of your customers are able to get onto that site anymore once we've been made aware of that particular site. And it's one of the most successful ways that our anti-fraud solution helps protect your customers. So I'm going to share a few best practices with you. Don't ignore the issue. In our experience, the worst thing you can do is sometimes to ignore the issue. Generally, the problem only becomes larger. We sometimes find that clients come to us after a particular fish attack or an impersonation issue has gained a lot of visibility internally, and perhaps their CEO or managing director was aware of this. Be proactive and begin monitoring and actioning all types of fraud before they become a big issue for the company and before your CEO would even get to know about it. Don't try and do things manually. This is only manageable for a very short period of time. Scammers realize they make money and therefore attacks will become more frequent. They'll occur at the weekend, in your out of hours, and you're going to be unable to control all of that. Many scammers target during uh, lunch working hours because that's when people are likely to check their bank account details during their lunch hour, for example. So you have to think what a scammer would do in order to get around the monitoring you have in place. And that's really why it's vital to have a constant monitoring system available. There are too many different possible channels to monitor manually all alone. 
We also recommend prioritizing what you focus on because really not all fraud is equal. Depending on your industry, particular types of attacks might be more dangerous to you and therefore they need urgent attention. So you can come and discuss with us what is more visible to you as a company and we'll be able to do something about that for you. So what you should do. Number one, really be proactive. As I said, find a provider who helps with your various issues in a global 24 hours a day, seven days a week scenario to help protect your customers. Do use new technology to find fraud and scams that you're most at risk of. Don't focus on what kind of threat. Focus on where all of your potential threats are coming from as a global approach because we've seen fraud come in many different shapes and sizes from many different locations. And finally, we would really recommend that you educate your own customers. Have them be your first weapon of defense. If they're attacked by a social engineering attack or a spearfish, make sure that you know about it. Make sure they know where to go to. If they find a fake website, make sure they know to send it to you and what to do about it. Set up an abuse box for them to forward scams to for further investigation internally. Many of our customers also feature updates and industry information on their own websites which actively shows customers that you're working against fraud to protect them and reassures them that they're in good hands. And finally, here are your main takeaways. So have a 24-7, 365 fraud provider. Brand-related abuses can potentially be part of a more elaborate social engineering attack. So always bear that in mind. It's not always as simple as it first looks. Fraudsters are continually monitoring their tactics. So have preventative measures in place to minimize the risks. Be prepared for the worst so that at any stage of a fraud life cycle, you have a strategy to shut down that fraudster and help protect your own customers. And protect your brand with a secure domain name portfolio. Protect your own websites against hackers so that you are not the first line of attack. And with that, I'll actually take any questions. If you do have a question, please just type it into the uh, little box that you see on your screen and I'll answer those questions. And I'll just wait a moment to see if anybody has any questions. All right. I'm not sure that anyone's writing your questions. So if you do have any questions, please do feel free to contact me after the webinar. We'll be sending around a summary. So um, do just get in touch. We're happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.